All right, folks, so there are two pretty exciting new outdoor focus features that Apple announced with iOS 17 and Watch OS 10, and those are gonna to be topographic maps as well as offline maps. And these are especially exciting for all of us out there who tend to go out and explore. So we have more context with topographic information like contour lines and shaded relief, but also offline maps for those of us who happen to go outside of cell phone range. And the other reason that these are pretty big features is that similar features like this have been available on more outdoor sports focus watches like Garmin and Chorus watches for a while now. So so it makes the Apple Watch much more capable in that department. However, these features do work quite a bit differently than some of those other brands, and we're gonna go over all those details in this video. Now, these features are just launching today as a public beta for iOS 17 and watchOS 10, and I anticipate that there's gonna be a lot of changes and updates to these features as time goes on, but I at least wanted to give you all kind of like a sneak peek of how this all works and go over some of the gotchas and caveats, at least at this point in time. And then I also have a follow-up video going over all the new cycling-related features that are coming with watch os 10 and i'll be dropping that video in the next day or so so make sure to subscribe and have those notification bells on when that video comes out so first off, to access these new features right now as of July 2023 when I'm filming this video, you'll need to be enrolled in Apple's beta program for both iOS 17 as well as watchOS 10, but as the name implies, it is beta software, so there may be bugs that you may encounter if you choose to try this out. So what I'd do is just go ahead and watch this entire video all the way through just to see if these features are actually worth it before you go download. But don't worry, iOS 17 as well as watchOS 10 will be officially released to everyone later this year in the fall. So first up, let's talk about their new topo map. So with these new topo maps, you'll be able to see both contour lines as well as shaded relief directly on the watch itself. And this is gonna be a super handy feature when you're out exploring because it adds just basically a lot more context to where you are, especially in the wilderness. So what both the contour lines and shaded relief features do is that they give you information on how steep the terrain may be in one direction or the other. So it can help you guide you to choose the right path for whenever you're out exploring. And at the moment during this beta release period, the topographic map information is limited to parks in North Northern California and some of the surrounding regions, but when this feature is officially launched in the fall, they'll have this information built out for the entire US, and I would imagine other regions as time moves on. And then next up, let's talk about the offline map feature. And this does also relate to the Topo map. So the first thing to note is that the offline map feature relies on your iPhone. Your Apple Watch is actually leveraging the downloaded maps on your phone rather than having them solely on the watch itself. And for how this all works, the first time you go into the Maps app on your iPhone after updating to iOS 17, it should come up with this prompt on how to download maps. And this is a super easy process. So what you'll do is basically just choose the area or region where you want to download maps for. So in one way, this is super nice because you'd be able to just download just the regions or areas that you're interested in versus having to download an entire country or continent or something like that. And what's also nice too is that it even shows how much space it'll take up on your phone for the size of this selected map. The flip side to that though is that you are limited to how much map data that you can download at one time. So you actually won't be able to download, let's say the entire United States like you could do on a Garmin or Chorus watch in one fell swoop. So in theory, you could could get the entire US as long as your phone had enough storage by downloading multiple areas manually, but it doesn't appear that you could just choose like one continent or country all at one time. Anyways, getting back to the download process, once you choose the region and click on download, it'll download those maps to your phone. So that way you can utilize them on your iPhone or your Apple Watch if you happen to go outside of cell phone range. And then what you can do from here is you can manage your offline maps on your account page by clicking on your profile icon right up here. And then here's all your offline maps. And then you also have some other settings in here like updating the maps, which you may need to do from time to time, as well as some other settings. And then basically just rinse and repeat with any other regions that you wanna download. And for how this works on your Apple Watch, like I was mentioning earlier, your Apple Watch is leveraging the downloaded maps on your iPhone. So your Apple Watch needs to be paired and in range of your iPhone to see the maps on your watch offline. You don't need to have cell service or Wi-Fi as the name implies for the offline maps, but you do need to have Bluetooth on on both devices for this to work. Now, what is really cool about this feature though is that it's downloaded a ton of information here, like not only streets and trails, but also points of interest. And you can do pretty much anything that you'd normally do with Apple Maps with these offline maps. Oh, and then one more thing I wanted to mention too is that it does also download the trailhead and trail routing information feature that you can use to explore different trail options with distance and elevation information based on your trailhead destination. But for how these features differ for more sports focused watches out there, let's go ahead and first start out with Garmin. So with Garmin watches that can store offline maps, those being their higher end watches like a Garmin Phoenix, a Garmin Epix, or a Forner 965, and plenty of other watches out there as well. As we talked about earlier, the map data is actually stored on the watch itself, and you don't have to have your phone with you for these to work. Additionally, Garmin also has it so you download larger regions, like more on the country level and higher. But one thing that's very similar though between Garmin and Apple with the downloaded map information is that both of them contain 
plenty of information like street names, trail names, and other points of interest, and both also do have contour lines. And then for how this differs from Coros, so Coros maps are more like images versus full routable maps. And what I mean by this is that it can give you context of your location from a bird's eye view, but it doesn't know exactly what street or trail you may be on at one particular time, and it also doesn't have points of interest like Garmin or Apple. Maps on Chorus watches certainly aren't as robust as the maps on the Apple Watch, but all this information is available offline. And also Chorus devices, you'll also download in larger regions just like a Garmin. But one last area where these features differ quite a bit is how you actually access the map. So with the Apple Watch, and this is whether you download the maps or not, the maps are only available in the Maps app, not the Workout app. So for instance, let's say you're doing a hike or a bike ride or something like that and you want to view the map. Well, it's not accessible with something like, let's say, scrolling to a workout view. To see the map, you'll actually have to go to the Maps app independently, and then if you want to go back to your workout, you'll have to go back to the Workout app. So it'd just be a little bit better if it was combined all in one. So that's where with a Garmin, the maps are directly available as a data page within a workout, which just makes it a lot more convenient to use when you're out and about. Anyhow, those are the new topo maps and offline maps features that are coming with watchOS 10 and iOS 17. And if you have any questions about anything I didn't cover in this video, make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. And if you found the information in this video useful, do me a favor and hit that like button. And also be on the lookout for the new cycling features video with watchOS 10 that I'll be dropping in like the next day or so. In the meantime, have fun out there and we will see you in the next video.